Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech. And this previous week was full of more information, just like it is every week. And so I wanted to share with you the latest information. And the first thing actually has to do with the next version of iPhone or iPhone 12 and specifically the 5.4 inch variant that we probably will see. So this is a mock-up of that variant or prototype for case makers. I've shown many times before, and the images I'm showing you here are actually leaked images of the front display of this phone. And so it looks like, again, it's confirmed that this smaller size is real, which is great because with the iPhone SE, it's basically a smaller version of that with next gen specs. So I would think Apple will get rid of the SE. That's just a thought unless the iPhone 12 5.4 is much more expensive with different internals. So it seems like Apple may have all of these different phones in their next lineup, but the 5.4 inch seems like it will be something that a lot of people will like a squared off edge and a smaller display. And recently as recent as an hour or so ago, Mac rumors apparently compared the notch on the 5.4 inch glass leaked images with the iPhone 11 pro in those phones and found that the notch appears to be slightly smaller. Now this is going to be great news for a lot of people. Personally, it doesn't bother me even a little bit, but I know a lot of people want them to shrink the notch. So it looks like it's shrinked maybe, or has shrunk maybe by an eighth or a quarter. So it's not totally gone, but it looks like they're going to be able to shrink it a little bit as components get smaller and smaller. Now, going along with the theme of front glass, apparently Corning has showed off its latest Gorilla Glass Victus glass. Now, the first phone to have that may be the Samsung Galaxy Note 20, but it seems like this glass is going to fix the problems that we have with the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max, where what you have when it comes to physics is basically if you want something that's less scratch resistant, it needs to be harder. But when you go to drop it, it may be a little bit more brittle. So it seems like with the 11 and 11 Pro Max, I have a ton of scratches, as you can see here. And of course I could use a screen protector to fix that, but with the 11 pro and 11 pro max in order to have it be more drop resistant, it needs to be a little bit softer. Now, as far as this new Corning gorilla glass, they said they went to tackle this problem head on and were able to make it not only withstand two meter drops, but also have a four times scratch resistance compared to what we currently have. So if that's something they're able to do. I can't wait to have that on the next iPhone. I would expect it to be there. And since Corning supplies most of the glass for most major phone makers, or at least Samsung, I believe, and iPhone, I would expect that glass on the next iPhones so that it's super hard, but also drop resistant. So that will be great. And of course, again, you can just protect it from scratches with a screen protector. Now, iOS 14 beta three has been fairly buggy for some people. Other people say it's great for me. I've had some weird issues and I covered that in a follow-up video yesterday. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to check it out. I talk about everything from battery to bugs, what you've experienced and more but iOS 14 beta four will most likely be next week if we're still on the two week schedule. However, that's only based off what they did with iOS 13 and iOS 12 betas. So if you look back at that timeline, they switched and put out betas bi-weekly and then weekly. So right now we may not see a beta until next week if they're still on the two week schedule and then closer to its release, we get one week schedules. Since everything's been delayed a little bit this year, it's possible we're still on the two week schedule. So don't get too hopeful for an update tomorrow, but you never know what Apple's going to do because they change it up all the time. So just keep in mind that when I'm predicting when something will come out, it's usually based on or it it's always based on data from the previous year so that we can see what they did and what they did the previous years before that with iOS 10, 11, 12, 13, and now 14. So hopefully we'll see something. If not, just keep reporting that feedback. And of course I'll keep you updated with follow-ups weekly. Now, aside from iOS 14 betas, iOS 13.5.1 is no longer being signed. What that means is you can no longer downgrade to it. And usually when Apple does that, it means another small version is coming. Now that's not always true, but in the past, within a week or so, they usually push out another update, whether that be a beta or a public version so that people can have their bugs fixed that are with say iOS 13.6. So it's possible we will see a 13.6.1, but Apple hasn't confirmed that to anyone, but usually when they do this with 
previous versions and they stop allowing you from downgrading to them, we usually see a next, a new version fairly soon. So maybe we'll see that. And of course I'll keep you updated via Twitter and YouTube and other places as well. Now, the latest from Ming Chi Kuo is that Apple is working on a periscope zoom lens for iPhones. Now this may not come until 2022, but we've already seen this from manufacturers such as Samsung. And what that means is it works like a periscope does on a submarine where you have the sensor on the side and then it uses mirrors to actually get the depth. So then it can move the actual lens to sort of give you a zoom function. Now, I don't know that this is necessary. We can get pretty good zoom with iPhones. Now, I guess if they are doing something different than Samsung or other manufacturers and it's worth the wait, then that's fine. But I would love to see what it is and maybe they just have it in the works since Apple is always trying new things. Now, also the last thing with the next generation iPhones, the iPhone 12, for example, it appears that the 12 series batteries still may be smaller, but iPhone 12 just had a battery certification pass through according to my smart price, which was 2,815 milliamp hours which is still smaller than the iPhone's 11's 3,110 milliamp hour battery, but it's possible that the next iPhone is so efficient with the A14 chipset that we won't need to worry about it. However, the bigger the battery, I really welcome that, especially in the latest iPhones. This is the, the prototype unit for the 12 Pro Max or whatever Apple calls it, and being able to put a huge battery in it and give us days of battery life would be ideal for most people. So I would love to see them increase the battery size, but again, keep in mind, this is all leaked information or rumors. It has not come to be yet, and we won't know 100%, of course, until it's out. Now, last week I talked about a new braided cable for the iPhone and that Apple may be getting rid of the charger in the box and then including a braided cable like I have here from the Mac Pro. There's more information showing this cable and it appears to be white in color. And you can see that it's a white cable that would compare it with say the iPhone 12, 12 pro and iPhone 12 pro max, and it would make it more durable, more reliable, more robust. And I definitely welcome it. I think it would be great to extend the longevity of these cables and they seem to hold up really well. And it would be similar to this one, USB-C on one end, lightning on the other, and then maybe you could use the new 20 watt charger that apparently has been leaked as well. So all of those things combined could make for a much better experience with iPhone 12, but many people still want that charger in the box. Now the iPad pro is probably my favorite Apple device in a long time, but a lot of people prefer the smaller size. And apparently Apple is still working on changing the iPad mini in 2021. And so I wanted to share with you this concept from Parker Ortolani that posted this on Twitter of what it could look like next to a normal size iPad or iPad pro if they converted it to this size or this style iPad. So I love this design. It still gives you a little bit of room on each side to hold it so that your finger isn't interfering with the screen too much. It just feels really slick and super nice in the hands with the squared off edges. And of course this would match what Apple has with the iPhone 12 that's coming out. So all of these things would be great to see and to see it on all iPads with this sort of design would be great as well. So I think we'll see something like that in the future, but probably not until 2021. Now, some Something I know a lot of people would love to see apparently was found in the code of Mac OS Big Sur, and that is Face ID for Mac. And this Mac is my 2016 Mac that's actually running Big Sur, and it has Touch ID. And while Touch ID is great, Face ID is much better on something like a Mac. I've used Windows Hello on Surface devices, and I would love to see it just unlock the device by looking at your face. It's much quicker, although, I mean, it doesn't take long to put your finger on this button and unlock it. It is nice to have that face unlockability. So hopefully we'll see that maybe with Mac's next Apple Silicon Max or something else, but maybe the next version or the next design of MacBook Pro and MacBook Air will have that. Now, there were some rumors floating around that Apple would release a new iMac as soon as this week. However, John Prosser seems to think that's in August instead, and it won't have a redesign. Now, this makes a little bit of sense to me. Now, keep in mind, it's just a rumor, but you'll see he said, if you want the new iMac, keep an eye out for August, no redesign. And I was hoping for a redesign, but it makes sense that Apple would wait for that redesign that's rumored to be more like this iPad Pro, and they may push that out for the Apple Silicon Mac. So, 
when they have their own chipsets in them, that makes more sense to do a redesign and maybe just do a spec bump now for those that want a new iMac that can handle their current tasks. So it's hard to say what Apple's really going to do. Some of these rumors have been back and forth. We've been expecting an iMac for a while. So to see one that's not redesigned, but with a spec bump, I could see that coming out soon, but it's hard to say until Apple actually announces it since there's been so much information back and forth. Now, I know a lot of people are interested in Apple glasses, and it looks like Apple is working on a new patent to help support Apple glasses. Now, Apple glass may just basically be like wearing an iPhone on your face, but using augmented reality could show you where things are located, maybe give you people's names that you know. But apparently, according to a new patent, it shows that Apple's working on making every surface a touch surface. So what that would mean is as you're looking through the glass, maybe you have some icons down here, you could press on those icons if those sensors could realize that this is a surface and then maybe you'd have an icon over here and you could interact with it just as though you were touching an iPad or an iPhone. And I would love to see that. It's interesting that Apple's working on it. And of course that would be something that was game would be game changing compared to what we have out now to the public. Now, the next thing is Apple has actually launched a security research program. So this is for people who are actual active security researchers and want to try and figure out if there's flaws in Apple's devices, they'll give them devices that are more unlocked or have code running on them so that you can look at different things and look for security vulnerabilities. And Apple actually offers a security bounty to people that are interested. However, you have to apply and there's a lot of strict rules behind that in that you can't share the device because it's less secure. And there's a bunch of other things such as you probably can't show it on YouTube, for example. So if it's something that you're not aware of that Apple's offering already, be sure to check it out. Otherwise, it'll be interesting to see what Apple gains out of that, but it means better security for all of us in all of our devices in the future. Now, finally, Apple released a story saying that they plan to be carbon neutral by 2030. Now, this is great for the environment in general, and anytime someone can reduce smog and things like that, I'm all for it. So Apple is committed to that, and they're committed to making things a little bit better. Maybe we'll see manufacturing shift around the world with what's going on, but right now it appears to be that it's in the plan by 2030 that everything will either be solar powered or offset somehow. So I thought that was interesting and I'll link all these stories in the description below. That's it for the information this week. And hopefully we'll see some of those updates this week. And if not, I'll keep you updated. Like I said before, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.